In the heart of the Pacific Ocean, the Hawaiian Islands emerge as one of nature's most fascinating demonstrations of creative power. This volcanic archipelago has been shaped over millions of years by the action of a geological hotspot, an exceptionally heated region in the Earth's mantle that remains fixed while the Pacific plate moves over it. The result of this geological dance is a chain of islands that tells the living story of land formation, where each island represents a different chapter in this epic narrative of creation and transformation. The Big Island of Hawaii, also known simply as Big Island, houses five majestic volcanoes that united to form this impressive landmass. Among them stands out a force of nature that has captured the attention of scientists and visitors from around the world, Kilauea. Located in the southeast of the island, this shield volcano rises 4,091 feet, 247 meters, above sea level, contrasting with its gigantic neighbor, Mauna Loa, which dominates the landscape with its 13,678 feet, 469 meters of altitude. Don't forget to give us a like to help the channel grow and bring more content like this. In Hawaiian tradition, Kilauea occupies a sacred place in local culture, being considered the dwelling of Pele, the powerful goddess of volcanoes and fire. According to ancestral legends, each eruption represents moments when Pele manifests her emotions, creating and recreating the land with her divine force. The very name Kilauea means spitting or much spread in the native language, a direct reference to this volcano's characteristic behavior of expelling lava continuously and spectacularly. But in the early morning of Thursday, September 19th, 2025, at 3.11 a.m. local time, something absolutely extraordinary happened again on this geological stage. According to official information from the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, Kilauea awakened once more dramatically, initiating what was classified as episode 33 of the ongoing eruption in Halema'uma'u crater. This was not just another common eruption, but a spectacle that would reach epic proportions not seen since the previous July. The first images captured by scientists revealed a natural phenomenon of impressive magnitude. Incandescent lava fountains rose to more than 492 feet, or 50 meters, in height, creating a true pillar of fire against the Hawaiian sky. Over the following hours, these volcanic fountains grew even more, reaching spectacular heights of 2,297 to 2,624 feet, 700 to 800 meters, becoming the highest recorded since episode 28 in July. A convective plume formed simultaneously, rising to approximately 9,843 feet, 3,000 meters, above the ground, creating a visual spectacle that could be observed from miles away. What makes episode 33 truly fascinating are not only its impressive dimensions, but the unique behavioral pattern it revealed about this geological giant. Unlike previous episodes where lava fountains emerged vertically, this time, the volcano's north vent tilted its fountains at approximately 60 degrees toward the east. This distinctive characteristic contrasted significantly with the 30 to 45 degree inclinations observed in episodes 31 and 32, suggesting changes in the internal dynamics of the magmatic chambers. The sequence of events that preceded this spectacular eruption began days earlier, when seismic instruments detected the first signs of volcanic agitation. During September 16th, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory recorded sporadic episodes of spattering related to gas pistoning, an activity that continued intensifying until the day of the eruption. Small lava flows began overflowing from the volcanic vent in the early morning of September 17th, becoming progressively larger during the night of September 17th to 18th. In the hours preceding the eruptive climax, dome-shaped fountains reaching 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters in height, accompanied the filling and overflowing of the volcanic vent. When lava reflux occurred, energetic gas explosions sent spatters 16 to 33 feet, 5 to 10 meters high, which deposited on the outer edges of the volcanic cone. Preliminary behavior served as a dramatic prelude to what was to come, demonstrating how the volcano's internal pressure was gradually accumulating. At 2.44 a.m. on September 19th, low and continuous lava fountains began emerging, progressively increasing in intensity. Ground tilt instruments recorded deflation, while seismic tremor increased drastically at 3.11 a.m., officially marking the beginning of episode 33. The combination of geophysical signals demonstrates the precision with which scientists can monitor and identify transitions between different phases of volcanic activity. 
The most intriguing aspect of this eruption was its relatively brief but extremely intense duration. After almost nine hours of continuous lava fountains, activity ceased abruptly at 12.8 p.m. the same day. The north vent stopped functioning first, followed by the south vent, which had ceased its minor activities around 6 a.m. after some intermittent explosions. This episodic nature, characteristic of Kalawea eruptions since December 2024, raises fascinating questions about the internal mechanisms that control the beginning and end of each eruptive event. Scientific preparation for monitoring events like episode 33 involves a sophisticated network of instruments and safety protocols that represent decades of technological advances in volcanology. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory maintains three live streaming cameras strategically positioned at Kilauea's summit, identified as V1Cam, V2Cam, and V3Cam, which allow scientists and the public to follow eruptive lava fountains in real time. Additionally, the KP-Cam and MK-Cam cameras are specifically dedicated to monitoring volcanic plume heights for civil aviation purposes. The data collected during episode 33 revealed crucial information about volcanic hazards that extend far beyond the spectacular visual display of lava fountains. The convective plume that rose 9,843 feet, 3,000 meters above the ground, carried with it a complex mixture of volcanic materials, including ash, pumice, scoria, and reticulate. These hot fragments of volcanic glass can fall to the ground within a radius of 3,280 to 9,843 feet, 1 to 3 kilometers, from the eruptive vents with the highest concentrations in the direction of prevailing winds. One of the most peculiar and poetically named hazards associated with Kilauea eruptions are the so-called Pele's hair, delicate strands of volcanic glass frequently produced by lava fountain activity. These fragments can be transported by wind for more than 9 and 3 tenths miles, 15 kilometers, from the volcanic vent, creating health risks for exposed people. When deposited on the ground, Pele's hair can clump and tangle, taking on an appearance similar to that of a dry tumbling plant, but with cutting properties that can cause skin irritation and respiratory problems. During intense episodes like 33, Pumice and other volcanic fragments fell on Highway 11, west of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, depending on wind conditions and eruption intensity. This situation exemplifies how volcanic activity can impact critical infrastructure, even when the eruption remains geographically confined to the summit caldera. Strong winds can transport light particles, including Pele's hair, to even greater distances in the wind direction, significantly expanding the area of possible exposure. To follow more fascinating content about the natural phenomena that shape our planet, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications.